So uh, Live Playwright Society uh, uh, aims to foster, I'm going to misquote the website, but the idea essentially is to, uh, to get a group of playwrights together, local playwrights, uh, um, actors and critics and people that just want to watch. We get together once a month and we read these, uh, typically we read 10 minute plays with the idea of uh, maybe getting that play in uh, good enough shape that it can go into short attention span theater which is our, uh, our annual 10 minute play festival. And that's worked out pretty well. So we started in 2009, um, which was uh, a couple years after the first time there was a 10 minute play locally written. Um, uh, I wrote that play and it was in, I think the second edition of the eight by tens, which I think you remember because you've definitely been involved with that as well. Uh, uh, and, uh, um, a couple of years later, I wrote a second one, and it occurred to me and to Lucia Foster, the fabulous Lucia Foster, who was the executive director at the time here, and Steve Arnold, who was the executive director of Churchill Theater at the time, that it would be nice to have some sort of a formal way of getting these locally written plays judged in a way, and then maybe improved, and then into short attention span theater. So it became almost a feeder for short attention span theater. Um, which is terrific because it allows us to uh, highlight these local playwrights. You know, I think that's a cool thing to do. We've got all these local actors and local directors. Over the years, Short Attention Span Theater started in 2005, so we're coming up on a big anniversary. Um, and uh, over the years, we've had just uh, hundreds of cast members, dozens and dozens of directors, dozens of plays from local, uh, Live Playwright Society have been on the stage here at the Garfield and all over the country, and maybe even the world. I'm not sure about that. We've had a couple of playwrights that are, um, what's the word, Steve, for when you write a lot of stuff? Prolific. Prolific is yeah. the very definition of Rich Pauly, yeah. who is a, 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 a recent addition to uh, Live Playwrights. And he will show up to each Live Playwright Society with a binder full of plays, individual, he'll have five plays, every single meeting, once a month, so. Yeah, I'm just, afraid to tell him that the thing that I'm jealous about the most is that he has that, the time to do that. You know, not to mention the fact that they're great, but he has the time to do that. I'm like, yeah. who has the time to do that? I just picture his house, you know, the hallways lined with stacks of scripts. I think that's sort of one of the purposes of Live Playwrights Society and that the uh, opportunity to read the script and to hear voices actually inhabit the characters and how that that dialogue sounds is an opportunity that um, can help develop that script even further than you might have otherwise. I mean, when you're staring at the words on the page, you're you're lacking sort of that extra human function of what how are these lines delivered by a real human being. Um, so Live Playwright Society and its meetings provide that opportunity to do that. Uh, whether or not it can get any more formal than that might be through the process of submitting it for short attention span theater or other uh, or other programs like it. We do. Our process is a cold reading. You show up. Um, typically, we have you know five or six people around the table. You you as the the writer actually cast your play. Like Jim, read this one. Steve, read this part. Uh, and we do a read through. And then after the read through, we do a, hopefully a constructive critique and. I can't, I, I've been hosting these meetings since 2009, and I can't think of any times when anything got heated or anybody was coming in with like a mean attitude or anything. I have great memories of uh, when we started, we would hold them in Andy's, the, the famous local, uh, local bar that is uh, sorely missed. Uh, uh, and we, there were times when we would be in the back room at Andy's where they would have the bands and stuff. And there'd be 25, 30 people and people just howling and everybody that was reading the parts was hamming it up like crazy. And after a couple of those, I sat there and I went, this is a lot of fun, but we're not getting any work done. So we, 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 uh, we, 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 small, you know, we shrunk the, the group a little bit at that point and started meeting at Church Hill, we've met here, we've met at the Imperial, we've been all over this town. Yeah, sometimes the folks that develop uh, into uh, contributing LPS members um, come up through as actors and have just wanted to branch out uh, into writing. Um, and I believe that because of that sort of funneling of talent, um, folks that, that 
you know, they're primarily we get introduced to them as actors. Um, that that has resulted in folks that have come from Churchill or might consider that to be sort of their home theater or or that. Um, around here these days, I think it's true to say that that the idea of home theaters or places where you do primarily all of your work or most of your work is kind of a thing of the past. Um, we're seeing a lot of folks here at the Garfield Center on our stage who uh, are doing what I think any reasonable actor would normally want to do. And that is, well, what projects are coming up this year and what do I want to be involved in, regardless of what theater that yeah. that show is appearing at. So that association, while it may still exist to a degree, um, is diminished now than it might have been back in the day when we first started. Mm. Yeah, we oh. have, um, without giving away anything at this That's particular right. point. Um, <laughs> we haven't announced the place yet. There is a relationship between um, Live Playwrights Society and, and Short Attention Span Theater this year, and that's as much as I'm going to say at this point. <laughs> I'm going to say a little bit more because okay. I think it's okay. Uh, so we do eight, we typically do eight shows for a short attention span theater and six of the eight are LPS plays this year, which is among the highest we've ever, we have never, we have not yet achieved the 100% LPS short attention span. So get to writing. So Mark is our board president and the producer of SAST. So <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll let him spill the beans and then decide because he said it that it's okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't reveal any names of the, of the, so the people there. To be good. announced, though. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I can say that Short Attention Span Theater opens June 22nd. Friday, June 22nd runs three weekends. Get your tickets now. They're going fast. I think it's interesting to, to note that one of the things that we like to say about LPS is that it's while there is a direct connection between it and short attention span theater um, one of the main goals is i think that we've talked about over the years is for it to essentially sort of foster a support system for the eastern shore voice or the local maryland playwright voice um, and however that may take the playwrights wherever they may go with that from this point forward is really kind of up to them now we have certainly benefited from that goal and that mission uh, as a part of what we do with short attention span theater, but it's, and the two are interlinked in that, in that way, but it's not exclusive and it's not specifically only for that purpose. Um, having said that though, what we've seen, and I think you'd agree, is that we uh, believe that the system uh, of presenting at live playwrights and getting objective feedback does indeed actually improve scripts and it does, uh, sort of bring back to us, should it be submitted for short attention span theater, uh, a, a much improved script that is way more stage ready than it might have been when we first took a look at it. Um, so yeah.